It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies with Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi everybody, it's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne, and welcome to The Wine Ladies, one sip at a time. Thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon. Absolutely, we got a wonderful show planned for you guys today. Now, the month of May happens to be a very, very busy month mm -hmm. for anything to do with wine. There's lots of tastings going on and consumer shows. Uh, we've been doing a lot of covering of those, the Tequila and More show with the South American wines, the Austrian wines, I believe the California Wine Fair is going on. So we've decided to feature another very, very exciting wine growing region here today with the most southerly vineyards in the world and also with a very very strong commitment to sustainability. It is a new wine growing region and it the, the length of the country all the way from the North Island to the South Island there's vineyards grown and uh, they are particularly known for one of my favorite grape varieties and that is the Sauvignon Blanc and one of my favorite fruits the kiwi. <laughs> Well, that can only be one place, right, everybody? <laughs> of course, we're talking about New Zealand. So, Suzanne, let's raise our glasses. Let's toast to having a wonderful show to the fabulous wine-growing region of New Zealand. Cheers. Cheers. And we're going to taste that in just a moment. All right, so tell us, here to tell us all about this incredible wine-growing region, we have actually got a gentleman who we met, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, about a year or so ago, and we were, yeah. when we were visiting uh, the Vancouver Playhouse, yeah. uh, and New Zealand was the feature country. We've got the Global Business Relations Manager mm -hmm. with us. He is uh, from the Pernod Ricard Company. He's an industry veteran, and his name is Jim Robertson. Welcome to the show, Jim. Ladies, I'm delighted to be here. It's uh, very exciting to be uh, back in Toronto. Oh, it's great to have you here. We and we almost had no wine to drink today. <laughs> it's that, okay. It's all good, guys. We that would have been, that would have been a faux pas, but we won't we won't tell them about it. We've no. got the wine. It's chilled perfectly, and we'll have a wonderful tasting. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was so excited when we were going to be doing a show about New Zealand because truly the Sauvignon Blanc is my go-to wine when I go out and about. And New what? Zealand is the go-to country. Is Absolutely. that not right? It is. It mm -hmm. is. Sauvignon Blanc to me, it it it, it says summer. Yep. It's it, it says bright and exuberant uh, and cheerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, if you want a wine to bring a smile to your face, why not a Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc, and why not one of mine? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like that. Now, yeah. now, you know, New Zealand wines, the, the whole region has a fantastic reputation for really good quality wines. You know, like that they did something right. And it's actually quite a new wine, wine region, isn't it? What, how did they do that, Jim? You know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful story. Uh, back in 19, uh, 1973, our then managing director uh, wasn't happy with, with the grapes that he was growing in the Auckland region. Okay. And he, he felt that there was somewhere in New Zealand that was going to deliver world-class grapes, thereby making world-class wine. Mm -hmm. So in his search, he ended up in Marlborough. Okay. And he bought um, several properties in Marlborough. And there's a, there's a lovely story where he stood in what is now the Brancott Vineyard, with the local newspaper and they asked him why he bought this land okay. and his response was wines from here will become world famous uh -huh. now that was in 1973 uh -huh. mm -hmm. in 1975 we planted our first Sauvignon Blanc grapes in Marlborough okay. and were the first to do so and wow. in, and Only in 1979 oh, that's yeah. incredible and in 1979 our first vintage of Brancott Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc was presented to the world. And, and the rest wow. is history. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> Quite yeah. remarkable because you know you don't when you think of it, that's only like what about thirty years or something like that. It's it's a very young region. It it's is. a very young region, and and we as winemakers are still you know continuing to learn about it. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, that I, I, I'm looking forward to showing you this afternoon mm -hmm. are some of the, the the very different flavors that come out of this magical region. Mm -hmm. How many wineries are there in New Zealand now, would you say? <laughs> Approximately. Oh, uh, I, 
would say around about 700. 700? There are 700, 700 wineries. In 30 uh, years? In 30 years, uh, spread across uh, 10 uh, regions. Mm -hmm. So 10 regions. 10 regions. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, Marlborough is the, 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 the driver pen. and the kingpin, if Flagship. you like, of, of uh, the New Zealand industry. Um, yeah, some of the, the wineries in, uh, in Hawke's Bay or Central Otago <laughs> might take issue with that. Yeah. Um, that's okay, it's all good. That's it's fine. promoting yes. the whole industry. Absolutely, but, but, but really, uh, Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc has created New Zealand's wine footprint yes. on the world. That's true. And when, you, when, you think, when we think of Marlborough, we're saying Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. Like if, are there other varietals that are suited necessarily or that people think like Otago, where do people, in central Otago, what do people think of when they think of that region? Uh, and uh, Hawke's Bay, same. Of, of, when, you, when you talk central, you think uh, Pinot Noir. Uh -huh. When you talk Hawke's Bay, you tend to think of, of, of Bordeaux uh, okay. style wines. And um, something is developing in a very exciting way is Syrah. Syrah, really? Yeah. So, okay. Yes. In, in which region? In the Hawke's Bay. In the Hawke's Bay, in the Hawke's Bay. Okay. yes, absolutely. Okay, so we'll look for that too. Yeah. So, so you know, they are, they're regions with wine styles that, that are, are beginning to, uh, to appear on the shelves around the world. Okay. But uh, always, always behind the, 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 the flagship of, of Marlborough Soap and right. And yes. how about your neighbors, uh, the Aussies? How do you guys the who? get... The who? Oh, <laughs> I was wondering what the reaction was going to be to that. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. well, they're fairly new as well in the, in the industry. Um, yes, they are, but uh, you know, they have a very long and, and, and proud heritage, particularly uh, with, with Shiraz. Uh -huh. True. And yeah. so uh, um, one of our sister companies um, planted the first um, commercial Shiraz vineyard um, in the Barossa in, in sort of the 1830s, I believe it was. Okay. So they have a much longer and, and, and more established been uh, a little uh, heritage. Yes, I mean we've been growing um, grapes in New Zealand for over 100 years. Yes, um, but it's really only recently, with the advent of of, of Marlborough and that and that really new, different style, that has captured the imagination of um, wine drinkers all over the world. Remember that movie when we, uh, wasn't it 2009 during the film festival? The, the whole movie was about New Zealand and the wine industry. Was it the Vit Vintner's Luck? What oh, was the name of that movie? I, with, uh, I think with, that um, yeah. Your, your most famous actor from, um, oh my goodness, the tip of my tongue. I, I, rem I remember Vintner's Luck, yes. Not O'Neill. Uh, no. Sam, Sam Neill. Sam Neill. Sam, Sam Neill. Neill. Sam Neill. Sam Neill. Yes, yes. 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 That's yes. Right. It was all about yeah, yeah. that. I never got to see that movie. Did you? Uh, no. Oh, we have to check that one. No, out. I didn't. But mm. uh, it was all about that, apparently. It was, and mm. and you know what? Also, in New Zealand, don't they like what is it like about sixteen hundred kilometers in length? Don't they make wine like all the way down? Very, very long, narrow country. Yes, mm -hmm. around about around about sixteen. Um, and the, the the most northern wine region um, mm -hmm. is is very close to the tip of the North Island, to, 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 to oh, the northern tip. Okay, okay. Um, and then, of course, when you get down to central Otago, they are currently the most southerly vineyards in the world. Right. And, and uh, what do they grow there? Is it? Oh, like that's that's very much Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir. country. That's Pinot Noir. Yes, yes, okay. Very much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very much. Yeah. 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 So today we're going to enjoy two wines, and mm -hmm. the first one we're going to be enjoying in the first segment is Stoneley, mm -hmm. which is actually one of my favorites. I do buy that quite a bit and uh, it's 1695 here in Ontario at the LCBO yeah. but and, sorry big pardon. and it's a general list so general you, you list. don't have to drive okay. around the province to so find it's it it's everywhere <laughs> all 600 LCBOs it's in all the appropriate <laughs> it's in all the appropriate locations yeah. Yeah. so yeah. we're going to try that so tell us a little bit about uh, the winery Stoneley. Well, the, the, the Stoneley is really interesting. Marlborough has, has three quite distinct sub-appellations. Mm -hmm. um, Stoneley comes from, from the most northern of the, the, the sub-appellations of Marlborough. Um, it tends to be a little warmer than the rest of the region. Um, the, the soils are uh, basically an old riverbed. So it, it's part of the Wairau River. And, and as it meandered through the valley um, over the years, it's, it's, it's laid down this, this um, deposit of very young, infertile river silts. But the most important aspect of that is th these river stones, or, or yeah. sunstones as we call them. Yeah. And um, if, if you were to walk through the, the, the Stoneley Vineyard, you have to be very careful. Well, don't, don't we have the vineyard oh. behind us here? This is the, the vineyard. We do indeed. We do, that's We do right. indeed. And that's... Uh, that looks like well, you a can night, see the stone. looks like a night scene there, and yeah. it really is. And, and and the stones there are not stones that have appeared 
by us laying them down. Uh -huh. They're stones, if, if, if we dig down four or five feet, you'll find them there. But they play a very, very important part in the, in the creation of the flavors of the stonely uh -huh. wine. Okay. okay. So, so you've, got this, you've got this warm, warmer climate, you've got this very light soil, and what happens is that uh, those stones also radiate the heat back up ah, into the canopy. Okay. So the fruit tends to ripen a little quicker than in the Southern Valley. But what we're going to enjoy are some wonderful uh, tropical notes, uh, some lovely, what I call uh, uh, um, ruby grapefruit, uh -huh. pink grapefruit, mm -hmm. and that lovely sort of thread of, uh, um, of acidity uh, kind of held together with, with with some nice mineral tightness. Okay. Ooh, that so, sounds so it's delicious. exciting. It's wow, exciting that wine. sounds amazing. Okay, so let's give it a try. Right. Yes, here I'll pass this over to Jim. I guess with the stones heating up, like you say, during the day, then the, the, they're sort of getting the heat. They get the sun all during the day, and then they get the heat that keeps, that is stored at night. Exactly. So exactly. they get that double whammy kind of thing, yeah. I guess. So. We still, we still enjoy a, a, a lovely long extended ripening season, mm -hmm. but compared to um, the, the next sub-region, which is the Southern Valleys where, where Brancot is, yes. um, the, the stony wines, uh, or stony grapes I should say, actually ripen about 10 days to two weeks earlier. earlier. Uh -huh. Because of earlier. those stones. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, we refer to it as, as um, you know, uh, ripen with the magic of the sunstones, mm -hmm. and it, it really is making good wine there's a lot of craftsmanship there's a lot of tradition but a little bit of magic helps as well <laughs> and are the stones like flat uh, or are they all they different are, sizes uh, they're all different sizes, all different they're, different all, sizes. They're, all, they're all different sizes uh, but the one thing that is common to all of them is is the amount of heat they generate wow mm -hmm. yeah. that's very good oh that's got a beautiful yeah. nose there I, I get that grapefruit for sure Mm -hmm. And it is like a, a red grapefruit. It's not yeah. like that. Um, it's not a pithy oh, yeah. uh, no. grapefruit. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, yeah. it, there's those lovely tropical notes. You so need a spoon almost. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But the, uh, uh, I love the way the passion fruit uh, mm -hmm. is balanced by, by the grapefruit. Uh, you've got that, that sort of thread of minerality running through it. Um, but I guess the hallmark of Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc is this wonderful, zesty, Delicious. jazzy, vibrant acidity. And um, what I like about it is, you know, you, you, you swallow and you suddenly get this, um, this sort of t tingling. Now, where's the yeah, food wine yeah. too. Exactly, yeah. where, where are yeah. the appetizers? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's giving yeah. me yeah. hungry. Yeah, the acid mm. sort of stays in there, let's refreshing. Yeah. Refreshing, yeah. absolutely. Lovely. What That's would you really match nice. up with this? What New Zealand dish would you enjoy with this at home? Well, <laughs> when we come to New Zealand. When you can, when <laughs> <laughs> I have you a heard saying. You it here first, yeah, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I have a saying yes. that if it swims in the ocean, clings to a rock, or buries his head in the sand. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's absolutely perfect for Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, so everything oh, so and anything. So, so there it is. So, clams, so the, the, any the, seafood There are your like oysters, there yeah. your, there's your clams, right. uh, there's, your, there's your sushi. Mm -hmm. um, I also love, I mean, we're, we're salads. I mean, we're all living mm -hmm. healthier lives. We're all eating lighter food yeah. most of the time, in yes. my yes. case. we're trying. <laughs> most of the time. Um, so, you know, a, a, a grilled Caesar salad with, with, with you know, lots of vegetables on it. Um, How about goat cheese? I love oh, goat cheese. That's my, my favorite go-to yes. cheese. I bet you that would go yummy with that. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> a, goat, a goat cheese with this would be absolutely sensational. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Totally, delicious. totally. So what love about it. the folks over at Stonely? Is it, um, is it um, like family-owned or what's the background? No, it's, it, it, is, it is part of the, 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 uh, the, the Pernod Ricard family. Okay. Um, um, and that's been that's been tr uh, tremendous for us because we have a um, uh, we have our owner who has charged us to, to capture the essence of the region or the sub regions. Okay. Um, Jamie Marfell, who's our who's our winemaker, Stonely winemaker, um, is a third generation born and brought up in Marlborough. Oh, okay. So he really knows the nuances of Marlborough yeah. as well as anybody in that region. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and uh, uh, Rod Brailsford, who's the, 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 the vineyard manager, uh, are two very, very meticulous people who work superbly in, uh, in tandem. In fact, Rod jokes that he actually creates the flavor uh -huh. in the vineyard and then hands it over to Jamie. Yeah. And uh, Jamie is then required to demonstrate a light touch. Now, so, is there so a lot Rod of sustainability? Like, like we were talking about that, you guys have a huge commitment to that. Yeah, sustainability for us, um, not just in the wine industry, mm -hmm. but as a country, is, is incredibly important. Right. Uh, from, from a winery perspective, 
Um, th there's a lot of things that we do beginning in the vineyard uh, and all the way through um, t to the shelf, in fact, uh, from things like um, uh, monitoring our water usage, uh, recycling of the, um, uh, the, the skins uh, after vintage, that goes back onto the vineyard uh -huh. as, as, as compost, so we're putting right. nutrients back into the soil. Mm -hmm. um, we plant uh, between every second row with, with wildflowers yeah. that attracts That's beneficial pretty. it's very pretty yeah. mm -hmm. it Lovely. attracts beneficial insects that come into the uh, to the vineyard mm -hmm. and they prey on the the the, the pests yeah so so here again we're using nature uh, as opposed to to artificial or, or, or synthetic means to 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 you know to manage the vineyard really really important not just to Stonely but to the industry as a whole yeah and you have yeah. some initiative going on where you want all of the wineries to be a part of some kind of um, um, I guess not to to, uh, to, be, to qualify for something to be a sustainable yeah. operation. The, the, the sustainable program uh, has its origins uh, uh, with a, a, a Swiss program. Uh -huh. We've taken it to the next level in New Zealand. Um, by by 2012, we are we are very confident. We're at about 97 percent now, but we're very confident that that all the vineyards in New Zealand and all the wineries in New Zealand will be members of this program. And in fact, wow. if we go to the uh, New Zealand Wine Fair, mm -hmm. no wine participating at that New Zealand Wine Fair um, uh, is it they not sustainable. They, 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 they have to be part of that program. Wow. Otherwise, you wow. cannot be, uh, yeah, you cannot be present. That's a great initiative. I and bet so you're the only country, that the wine grow region, that is doing that. I um, can't imagine. Different countries are doing different programs. Yeah. But I, okay. I think this is, this is one from, from, from my perspective right. where important. the whole of the industry has got to, you know, we're of one voice. Mm -hmm. Sure. Awesome. And, and, yeah, and that, that I think, is, is, is a sign of an industry that's, that's, that's working together. Uh, because we understand how important it is to us. Well, that's very obvious with the, with the success of all the wine fairs that we have here in, in Canada about New yes. Zealand and, and the, the love of New Zealand wines here in Canada and the world for that matter. We're, we're going to take a short break now. Mm -hmm. When we get back, we're going, to, we're going to cross the street or jump across the pond. The valley. The valley. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to skip across the valley. We're going yeah. to skip across the valley yeah. and we're going to enjoy another New Zealand wine mm -hmm. from Ban Brancroft Estates. That's coming up next. So don't go away. More with Jim when we get back. Okay, well, we're back for the second half of the show. We still have our wonderful guest, Jim Robertson, here from uh, New Zealand. We've en we enjoyed a wonderful wine in the first half of the show, and now we're going to enjoy another, a secondary wine. We are indeed. Mm -hmm. We're going to be trying a bit of New Zealand wine history. Okay, okay. let's do that. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> so uh, let, me, let me reach across. And There's not a test at the end of this, is there? There is a test. There is a <laughs> test. Uh -oh. There is a test. Pay attention, Susan. <laughs> I will. I'll try. Between the two of us, I'm sure we'll get a good grade. <laughs> now this, we're staying in Marlborough, though, right? We are staying in Marlborough. We're actually, as I said, we're going to skip across the valley. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And um, we're probably between eight and ten miles away. Okay, not far. Not My far, goodness. not far nice at all. A hike in the countryside. Not far at all, but what we're going to, what we're going to see here is a, is a wine that is completely and totally different in, in, in personality. Okay. Right? So whereas we had a, we had a wine from, from the, the stony side of the valley, right. which was all about um, um, tropical notes, elegance and finesse, uh, now we, we're coming down to the south and much, much cooler. Okay. The soils there are um, a very old soil, sort of glacial uh, debris, outwash, um, and, and a very high uh, clay content. Okay. Plus, it's about, as I said, about two degrees cooler. Uh -huh. So the wines there will, will express themselves totally differently. Okay. Totally differently. So aromatically, um, you know, we're looking here at, uh, on this particular wine, I, I, I tasted it this morning. Okay. <laughs> but on this particular wine. Grand Cot Estate. Indeed. Grand uh, Estate. This particular oh, wine, yeah, we should different. be pulling out um, s some nice uh, peach, mm -hmm. sort of white nectarine. Uh, s some really nice citrus, grapefruit notes again. Yes. Probably more into the more into sort of the what I would call the the the, the, the greener spectrum rather than the, the more tropical spectrum. Uh -huh. But most importantly with this wine is is the palate, the texture. Okay. This is a wine that's got great structure, great weight, and layers and layers of complexity. Okay. So, ladies, shall okay. we? Now this, this one was also di fermented for a little bit in um, oak, wasn't it? A small amount of it. Indeed, it was. Uh, I think this vintage, 
uh, Patrick uh, uh, Martin, our chief winemaker, wanted to, to really get some extra mm. complexity to the wine. So it's about 7%. Yes. Okay. Just a smidgen, as we yes. say. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that is very. Oh, you know what? The that grapefruit, mm -hmm. not that red grapefruit. No, the no. other grapefruit, yeah. the white yeah. one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I really noticed mm -hmm. that. And the richness. Yes, mm -hmm. and the texture rich. of this yeah. wine. Yeah, almost yeah. oily in a sense, like it has a different texture, kind of. Thing, we right? quite often, like, yeah, we quite often talk about this wine as sort of having almost like a like a green olive texture to it. Mm. Um, the, the mouthfeel is superb. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's still yeah. staying there. Yeah. You know what the difference is, too, for some reason? Um, with the former one, it all came down here and stayed down here. Yeah. Now it's also staying on the palate, on the actual tongue a little yeah. bit more for some e reason. Exactly. And, 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 it, and what I love about it, it has this wonderful, long, lingering. It's mm -hmm. almost taking a leisurely stroll across your, yeah, um, yeah, still there. Across your palate. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I like that. Yeah. A leisurely, leisurely uh, stroll across and so, your palate. Yeah. yeah. And this is going to be available mm. here in Ontario starting in June. So this is a brand new uh, wine for us here. This is this is very exciting for us because what we what we're presenting mm -hmm. to the the the, the um, Sauvignon Blanc lovers of Ontario mm -hmm. is Brancot Estate, the B Letter Series. Uh -huh. Now, th th when I said that we were tasting a bit of history, um, this wine comes from the original plantings or the original location in Marlborough. So the Brancott Vineyard, yeah, exactly. So okay. the letter, the letter series is is um, acknowledging our iconic vineyards around right. Marlborough. Uh -huh. And Brancott was the first vineyard planted in Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. And uh, the, the B letter series is right now the pinnacle of what we produce. Oh. And so when I say that, that, that we're enjoying a bit of, of, of New Zealand wine history, this is where it all started. So the wow. letter series yeah. and this definitely has an A, we would have to say. It gets a grade of A. A grade of A. <laughs> triple, joke? Yeah. triple A. Oh, triple A. Triple A, okay. excuse me. So triple A. A plus plus. A plus, so plus. Thank you. I'll, okay. I'll take that. I'll, That's I'll take delicious. That. Right. That's yeah. del and so yeah. this is going to be a, a, a little bit higher than sixteen ninety five. Yeah, right? uh, this will yeah. come in, um, I think, you know, very well priced at mm -hmm. at, at nineteen ninety five. Yes, that's awesome. Um, so you know, you, you're getting the, the creme de la creme mm -hmm. of of Marlborough um, at I think a, a a terrific value for money price. Amazing. But that's not fun. only in Ontario, it's here. But because uh, this show is an internet based show, it's seen all over the world. This so wine, this wine, as well as the other one, they're available pretty well everywhere. Of is course, of course, um, we can enjoy this. Uh, we can enjoy this in London. We can enjoy it in New York. We can enjoy it uh, in Shanghai, where I'll be shortly. Um, this wine, this wine, no, no, it's an international wine. Yes. And I like the fact that it's yeah. that you know, um, Brancot and and you know all our New Zealand uh, Sauvignon Blancs are introducing people to the to the pleasures and delights of of, of New Zealand, but specifically Marlborough. Yeah, that's delicious. Really good. I'm just curious too about something. We were talking about sustainability and mm -hmm. everything in that regard. What about like organic and biodynamic? How does that like lead into it? Is there how, what kind of role do they play in New Zealand? A huge role. Uh, um, our our um, uh, organic program right now is looking to have 20% of, of the total New Zealand um, uh, vineyard land by 2020, 20% by 2020, okay. organic. Okay. Um, we at Brancott have a, have a very intensive um, uh, organic program, and we've just launched a new range in New Zealand, it's New Zealand only at the moment, called Living Land. Oh, yeah. And, and, and Living Land is exciting for us. Every dollar... Mm -hmm. Uh, or every every sale we make, a dollar goes towards the Living Land Fund, and right now we're investing behind the the, the conservation of the New Zealand native um, uh, falcon, falcon. Ah. and that's exciting for us because the falcon works very closely with us in terms of, of controlling our, our, our bird population uh -huh. within the vineyards. He gets rid That's of those. Amazing. Yes. Chase them away. Chase <laughs> them putting away. putting them to work. A um, little bit of lunch yes. here and there. And one of the things, <laughs> one of the things we've just done is we've, we've just built a, uh, an aviary on, on Brancott. Oh, wow. We're um, uh, working with the, the, the Conservation Trust um, uh, we've got a, a very successful breeding program. Oh, that's amazing! So th you know, th there is some, th there is some, some real meaning to this. Right. Um, and, and, and that range, the Living Land range, um, is all organic, uh -huh. and we're looking to, uh, to you know, basically triple 
uh, our output over the next three to five years. Wow, yeah. so that's and significant, a dollar per bottle sold. Yeah. That's great. And I love the, the, the vineyard. I'm looking at the, the background here on the show. So that is an actual picture of the vineyards and, and the uh, facility. We are looking out um, over the, the, the Brancott Vineyard, mm -hmm. um, straight across the valley, north and on a clear day, we can see the, forever. We can see the, exactly. <laughs> we can see the hills. We can see the hills of the North Island of New Zealand, right there. So, I couldn't resist. so it's nice. No, but that's pretty you cool. You guys will that's have to come down and experience it yourselves. We're you coming. Yes, we're Are you sure you want to let the wine ladies loose in New Zealand? I'm not sure. You might want to rethink that. <laughs> I'll, co I'll consult. <laughs> well, you know what? He was brave enough to come on our show. <laughs> no, ladies, I've, I've been following your show, and what I really enjoy. This is about celebrating wine. This is about celebrating life and fun. Yes. And I, you know, I don't drink wine in, with Dow, Dow people. Can I say that? <laughs> Oh, sure. Just don't name any names, Jim. No, no, no. It's, it's well, thank a, you for that it's about, a, it's about a celebration, and you guys celebrate. And I need to take one of those big glasses home with me. Hey. I'll see if I can make a call. Yeah. So you're here, you are here in Toronto, actually, for the New Zealand Wine Fair, which is, is that correct? Yes. Uh, so tell uh, us a little bit about that. Uh, tomorrow. Um, one of the things that we do um, on a regular basis is we, we have a New Zealand wine fair in a lot of markets around the world. Tomorrow we're here in Toronto. Uh, there are a number of, of wineries from all over New Zealand. So mm -hmm. not just Sauvignon Blanc, there's Pinot Noir, Riesling, Syrah, uh, a number of wines being presented. Um, and what we do is uh, during the afternoon we have a, a session for the trade. Mm -hmm. So, so the restaurateurs, uh, the, the restaurateurs, sommeliers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the liquor boards, in fact, they can come in, they can interact with the winemakers, uh, they can taste the wines, they, they can really sort of, you know, uh, drill down and, and get the information that they need. Running concurrent with that is a, um, a, 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 a seminar on the, the, the regionality of New Zealand Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. um, which I'm involved in. Yeah. Uh, and then in the evening, um, we have uh, a, a, a sold out <laughs> consumer event and it is it is sold it's, out yeah it, 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 it's a sold wow. out event evening and and what we love about that is it says to us that that, that wine drinkers of of ontario mm -hmm. really want to explore new zealand wine yeah. and and you know in, instead of heading down there at this point they're beginning the journey here absolutely mm -hmm. and hopefully they will they will discover New Zealand and they'll want to know more about it and will come visit with us as I hope you ladies do. Well, thank you. Well, maybe on just that note, we day. should book our reservation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, Jim, that you have a tasting you have to go to um, the next little while, so we want to thank you so much for coming in this afternoon and sharing these lovely wines with us and, and your love of New Zealand, and, and we love New Zealand as well, don't we, Georgia? We do, and I also want to thank you once again for your invitation. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Jim, it was a lot uh, of fun. Uh, <laughs> you, you, I see we're on... Uh, we're, you have the evidence. So look, I, 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 no, can right, I say it's on, you know, it's on video? I love it. I love it. Look, it's, it's, thank you so much for the invitation to come in and, and, and share uh, um, our wines with you, our Stonely and our Brancott wines. And um, uh, I hope all you listeners out there, or all you viewers out viewers. there, I'm sorry, all you viewers out there, that you do put New Zealand and Marlborough uh, on your future travel itineraries. And we would love to host you at the Brancott Visitor Centre. Absolutely. Lovely. On that note, cheers. 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 cheers to New Zealand. Thanks again to cheers. New Zealand. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone. Have cheers. a great week. Bye, everybody.